All right, so I see the recording has started. Uh, welcome to the first part of uh, the introduction to Git. In this part, I will be talking about uh, Git, the inner workings and uh, version control systems in general a little bit and hope to give you an overview. So to start, I would like to start with a little bit of uh, terminology. So we have these uh, uh, terms that are used quite interchangeably, but there is a difference. So Git is the software to manage versioning and it lets you make uh, and track local changes and push them to a remote repository. So it's the tool that runs on a given laptop and uh, enables the user or programmer or whatnot to uh, yeah, track his changes. And GitHub and GitLab are cloud services to host said remote Git repositories. And they include additional features uh, like for example, issue tracking or access control so Git is the tool and GitHub and GitLab are uh, yeah, services to store our data. And a repository can be thought of as a fancy folder that uh, contains files and their complete history. And this is the concept of version control systems. So if uh, I were to edit a file, let's say this one here, uh, and I do some editing, and some editing again and so forth, uh, the single points in time will be recorded and stored. A very simple uh, version control system is the undo redo function that we have in editors. We can just uh, step by step go back and forth uh, between uh, versions of our document. And uh, for a complete version control system, this is uh, of course uh, not enough as features. So uh, uh, they have a lot of yeah, a lot more features and I will get back to that later on. We do have uh, two uh, large concepts. We have uh, centralized uh, version control systems where the user uh, is required to log into the server and then edit a file. The file always stays on the server. And uh, for example, Wikipedia works like that. So a user can uh, log into Wikipedia, edit uh, an article and save it and then log out again. So the data and the work always stays there. And yeah, the other way would be a distributed uh, version control system, which uh, actually a user does not uh, work on the file on the server, but uh, every single user copies the file to its own device, edits it, and then after editing it, pushes it back to the server. And this is how Git works. So one of the advantages of this system is uh, that you can work uh, offline. So once you have the downloaded the file, there is no need to be connected to the server anymore. And uh, you postpone a little bit the problem of two people editing the same file at the same time. So how does Git uh, work in a little bit more detail? So we do have our Git server that hosts our files in a repository. And uh, I, as a user, can connect to it and uh, clone or pull the file to my computer. After that, I edit and commit the changes uh, to the file and push it back onto the server. And then my commit is done. By doing these steps uh, after each other many times, uh, I get uh, this linear history. So every single time I edit, commit, and push, I get a new version. and. Uh, Actually, those single versions are called commits and they are all stored in the repository. So the whole thing is uh, one file in this case with uh, its complete history and different versions. And this is the content of my repository. So if I clone or download, I don't get a single file like this version here, but I get the complete thing and uh, I have the whole history on my machine. And uh, a linear path like this uh, is nice if I'm editing uh, a single file or if it's a few people working on a file. But uh, once the teams grow and the complexity of the data uh, grows, then uh, maybe editing has to uh, take place in a different way. So there are two additional concepts that are very important in Git, which are branching and merging. So for example, branching, uh, if I edit a file here and I have this one, for example, published, and I do not want to change it uh, while it is published. I can branch this file to a second branch. So this would be my main branch. And I would open a secondary branch where I can do my editing. 
So I uh, have some people maybe edit uh, the published file, like uh, correcting typos or small edits. And I can, for example, restructure my complete data in the secondary branch. And once I'm done here and happy with the result, I can merge those two branches together back to one branch. In this case, I merge them to the main branch again and continue editing on that file. And I can branch off every single uh, commit and I can have side branches that maybe never get back, merge back to the main branch, uh, depending of how I develop my software. And the third thing that is uh, very important about Git is that I can check out every single of these commits. So since when I download the repository, I get the whole information. So this whole content, uh, once I have downloaded it on my local machine, I can check out every single one of them. So I can look at this version here, or I can go back to there and find out what went wrong if I programmed something, for example, that I was working before and didn't afterwards. So that concludes the first part, and I would give the floor to Florian and uh, start with the live demo. Alex, um, let me just share my screen. Okay. Can you see the slide now? Yes. Ah, okay. So um welcome to the second part of this webinar as barbara already mentioned my name is florian Wörister. and so far you heard about the theoretical concepts of git and i will continue now to give you a more practical view on the topic but before i start i want to share some thoughts on my approach and first, I want to answer straight away why we are going to use GitLab in this session and not GitHub. And the answer is quite simple, because unlike GitHub, GitLab offers the possibility that universities can host their own GitLab servers on um, university infrastructure, for example, the TU Wien offers such a service. So we at the TU Wien have um, our own GitHub, uh, GitLab instance that can be used uh, for by students and researchers. And this is important because um, we there are cases where we want to host the data on our side and don't want to give it away to some server in the, for example, in the United States. And next, I want to talk about uh, the idea behind the things I'm going to show you now and how I am um, made the content I'm presenting you. Uh, and by now, I have seen quite a lot of Git workshops and Git tutorials, and most of them had the approach that they explained one feature after another. And... Um, it was quite informative if you already had some clue about Git. But what irritated me about this approach is that most of the time it leaves out that um, the guy who invented Git didn't just get up one day and thought, hey, today I'm going to invent a new version control system. Uh, but rather he, he must have had some issues um, that made him think that we need a new tool and and i want to uh, emphasize on on those issues that were tried to be solved with git so this session uh, a short disclaimer this session will not be a how do i set up git tutorial or it will also not be a full blown instruction on every feature of git and gitlab my objective is to make you understand the, the basic Git terminology. So if you are, for example, if you're not a software developer, that you're still able to talk to a software developer when he has um, some issues um, maintaining the code. 
and I want you to show how people usually interact with uh, Git and how they work. How does an everyday uh, routine look like? That said, we can now fire up our browser and log in into GitLab right away and have a first look. So um, we'll make it a bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> This is the, the main page of GitLab. And what we are going to do now is to log in. You need to um, create an account in order to be able to uh, create your repositories. Or you can use one of those social logins, um, like for other services. So if you have a Google account, a GitHub account, Twitter account, or or Salesforce account, you can use your already existing account to log into GitLab. Um, but I have my own. And when you log in to GitLab, um, the first page you see is a, a list of your projects. And here we have the first uh, deviation from what uh, we heard before, because in GitLab, um, a project refers to a repository. So these are the uh, this is used as a synonym. And uh, on the menu, um, I want to show you this little icon. It's uh, one thing that is uh, used quite often. It's a, a little plus icon. Make it a little bigger. And depending on which page you are, um, every object that can be somehow created on the page uh, you will find it on the plus so if i press it now i can see okay i can create a new project a repository or a new group so um, whenever you're looking for creating something there will always be this plus on top and you can click on it and look if the, the thing you want to create is listed and we also have a little notification area this will become important later because um, GitLab is also supporting uh, a, a workflow when it comes to contributing with others and you're able to assign tasks to different people. And whenever you get some work assigned, it will show up here in this notification area. There will pop up little numbers next to those icons. And um, yeah, this is the place where you can um, edit your uh, preferences and information about your use account and sign out. But the, the most important thing is, is this list down here. So, and we see that I only have one repository at the moment, and which is called FDM Git Workshop hands on. And we will um, open it right away and see um, that this is how a repository looks like in GitLab. And uh, it's, there's quite a bunch of information. So uh, um, let's go it through step by step, I would suggest. On the top, you can see the, the name of the repository. Then you have some information, some, some metadata about the repository. For example, how often someone already contributed, how many branch there are, and how much space you're using at the moment, um, disk space. And below that, you find a description of your repository. Uh, in this area, you see information about the last contribution to your repository. And um, this Dropbox um, is quite important because uh, it allows you to switch between branches. We had heard before that there are branches and you can imagine branches as some kind of different versions or different states of your repository. And in the web UI, you can uh, switch branches with this box, but at the moment we only have this one, so we can't switch anything. And um, Alex also referred uh, 
uh, Git repository to uh, he, he compared it to uh, a fancy folder or a, a fancy file explorer, and this is what we see here. This is the the list of um, all files um, that are um, stored in our repository, and on top we see there can be folders containing files, but there can also be files on the root level. And we also have a, a preview of um, files below that. And in that case, now uh, we see the readme file. And I want to say something about this readme file because I'm going to send this to you after the workshop. I um, made this. It's a, a summary of everything I'm going to show you today, plus some additional uh, content, for example, um, uh, yeah, uh, this is what we heard already. What is the difference between Git and GitLab? I have added a glossary where you can uh, look up uh, some of the Git terms we are uh, using today, how I'm going to install it. And what I showed you now, the different things in the UI, I made some graphics and explained all these areas. So if you have things you're not quite sure about, Tomorrow you can uh, open this uh, readme page and have a look on yourself. Yes, and we also have this sidebar here and it houses the, the most frequent uh, features of Git lab we are uh, using um, when we work with it. And yeah, here are things like some information about our project, uh, some repository related um, functions like, for example, this one can be used to show the files that are in my repository. I can have an own view on um, how many contributions were there already and who made these contributions, what things were changed and so on. And now for the next um feature of GitLab, I want you to imagine something. Um, imagine you find an issue in one of your files um, in your repository. For example, um, I find a typo in my readme or something like that, but I don't really have time at the moment to fix it. And um, for example, I tend to forget it if I don't write it down. So maybe I, I write a post-it and put it on my screen, but um, GitLab provides a feature to do that. Um, and it's taking care of, of note taking for you. And it supports the process and it's called issue tracking. And the issue tracking feature can be opened if you click this issue button. And this can do uh, a few things. Um, the most uh, important thing is that it lists you already created issues. And we see we already have one here, but we can also use this blue button to create new issues if we found something at the moment and, and want to take a note of it. And a very nice feature of, of this uh, issue tracking is the, the board. If you're collaborating uh, in a, a GitLab project and you have, um, let's say, five members and you yours want to split up work a bit um, and the project lead wants to uh, maintain an overview of the progress, um, you can use this board. And it's it, maybe you know Kanban boards, it, it works similar. It lists your issues you already had on the open column and if you start working and, and think okay I, I want to work on this issue today and um, I want my project lead that he also knows it uh, when he opens the board I can just take it move it here and I can also open the ticket read what's inside and before, when I talked about this notification area on top, uh, I said that it's possible to assign 
tasks to each other. And that's what we see here at the side. Um, there's something called assignees. So I could now um, assign this uh, issue to me. So everyone who reads the issue knows, ah, okay, Florian is already taking care of it. So I'm probably looking for some other issue working on. Yes. And when we see the issue, um, uh, it looks like um, uh, I forgot something in my readme. So it says the table of content in the readme file says that there should be some additional training material listed, but the file doesn't contain a section called training material. And this will be our uh, storyline for today. So I, I thought I, I will explain um, uh, a basic workflow when I, uh, that's something I do um, on a daily basis. Um, and that is contributing to a, a Git repository. And now I want to remind you of what I said in the beginning. I was wondering about the problem the inventor of Git had when I got the idea creating, uh, when he got the idea creating this tool. And the answer is he had a project which was quite large and there were a lot of contributors and things got a bit messy. And he put some thought in it how a clean workflow could look like when uh, many people collaborate on, on the same project. And um, yeah, that will be the, the key takeaway of this session today to see how this uh, process look, looks like, what, what things need to be done to do it. Yes. Um, so I'm switching back to the slides now. So as a short reminder, this is the scenario we are dealing with now. So the scenario is after going through the readme file, we discovered that there is a section missing that lists additional training material. We have a bunch of links we want to add to that page. In addition, we are not allowed to add changes to the main branch of the re repository. But how are we going to do that? A uh, short notice on the thing that we are not allowed to contribute to the main branch. This is quite a, a common thing because uh, in large projects, there's mostly only a limited group of people uh, allowed to add uh, things to the, the, the main uh, branch of the repository because um, they want to curate it. They want to review contributions before they edit, uh, before they include it to the main branch. And this is something we are going to do today as well. So um, this is my, the, the, this are the steps we are going to do now in sequential order. Um, as we heard before, uh, when working with Git, um, users first download the repository on their local machine. And with download, uh, I mean everything. So not only the, the most recent version of the repository, it downloads the, the whole history. And this process is called cloning. So we are cloning the repository to our local machine. And the second thing we heard about today was branching. As we don't want to mess around with the main branch that already existed and is, was, is curated, we want to create a new branch on top of those, this main branch so that we have the, the version of the main branch. And on this new branch, we want to add our training material. So we have two branches now. The main branch, if we check out the main branch, uh, we see the repository as I showed it you before. And we want the second branch that shows the readme file, including the training material. And after we did that, because we need this other guy to review our changes, we need somehow to transfer this new branch back to the GitLab server. And 
This is done with a process called push. So we are going to push this new branch back to the GitLab server. And after that, when the, the branch, including the new changes is on the server, we are not just merging it in the uh, main branch because we are not allowed to, we are creating something that is called merge request. And uh, you might ask now, uh, what is a merge request? Uh, you can imagine a merge request as some kind of uh, also a post it or, or a, a ticket. Uh, and it says that I want to merge my changes into the main branch and please uh, review my changes. And if you're fine with it, please merge it into the main branch. And this is a feature of, of GitLab. Um, GitHub also is uh, something similar to that. And the nice thing is um, when I create the merge request, nothing is merged yet, but the reviewer has the possibility to leave comments on my changes. So, and this is really fine granular. So we will see it later. You can leave comments on every line and say that this line is uh, not good because I think there is a mistake um, and have a look on these sources. It explains how to do it better. And after this uh, review process is done, um, all the review has to do is to press one button and that merges the changes into the main branch. So it doesn't have to do this cumbersome work of looking what is different between the two files and uh, okay, I need to take this line, this is new. And because this is not only on, this is not also cumbersome, it is also uh, error prone. Yes. Um, so, okay. And now we're uh, going, uh, we're starting with the first step. So I'm leaving the presentation again. And I opened now a, a command line in on my local machine as a short reminder, the things we saw before in GitLab, they're all on a server, probably in the US. And what we are now wanting to do is to download this um, uh, to our local machine. And there are two approaches to do that. You could either use um, the, you can directly type your commands on your PC, which I will do. And there are also UIs for that. And you might think UIs would be easier to understand, but I didn't choose that approach because um, there are different UIs for different operating systems. And what I'm going to do today works on every operating system plus I will, it's just, uh, I think about five commands and they are short and they are named similar to the functionalities you find in the different UIs. So if you understood the steps we are doing here, you don't have to recall the exact commands, just um, what we, we are doing uh, on an abstract level, then you will be able to uh, find your way around in any UI. Okay, so in, in general, every git command has the, the same form and it always starts with git and then it follows some kind of, of verb describing the operation we want to do. And after that, we add some options. That is information the operation needs to for execution. So yeah. So for example, uh, our first command, as we said, is we, we want to clone the remote repository now. And therefore our verb is clone. And these commands need to know the address of our repository. And now 
um, we have to find this out and therefore we need to switch back to the, the GitLab server. And I will go back to the main repository view by clicking this, uh, clicking on the name of the repository on the left side here. And you can see this blue button here, it says clone and clicking on it um, just gives us, it shows us the, um, the address to our repository. And we, when you click on this symbol here on the right, uh, it just copies it and you can go back and paste it. Yeah, and by pressing enter, it um, downloads the repository on our machine. And I have also prepared a, a visual representation of what we just did. So this is the, the situation we had before we cloned it. So this is our GitLab server. And this uh, rectangle represents our repository. And in this repository, we have already some commits this uh, indicated as the circles here. Uh, next to it, we see the, the description of every commit. And <clears throat> this rectangle is uh, representing branches. And every branch is, uh, is pointing to some commit. Yeah. So branches are actually just pointers to a, a certain commit and this is the most recent version of this branch and when we are cloning now um, nothing else happens then that everything what we have on the server is copied on our local machine and we can uh, verify that now by opening our file system and we see um, the clone uh, operation now created this folder for me, the FTM Git workshop hands-on. The folder is called exactly the same as the Git repository. And if I open it, we see the readme file and the images folder and the license file, the exact same files as we saw here in the, the files list of our repository. Okay, so the next thing we need to tell Git that we want to add changes to a new branch. So we don't want to work on this main branch. And we want to call this new branch add trainings material. And notice that after creating a new branch, it doesn't uh, have any effects on, on the commits. So creating a new branch doesn't make any new commits because we are not changing the files. We are just telling that there will be a new uh, version we're working on now that we later on maybe want to um, incorporate in, in the main branch. <clears throat> the, and the new branch will also point to the, the place where the main branch is now pointing because we want to continue from this uh, position on. And to create this new branch, <clears throat> the checkout operation will be used. So the next command is called git check out. And um, then we need the option is called uh, dash B to create a new branch. And the most important thing here now is um, that we now provide the name of our new branch. And the new name of the branch is add training material. Ah, okay. Now uh, uh, an error occurred because um, we can see it's fatal, not a Git repository. The problem is um, to execute these commands, I, 
I need to execute them in the uh, Git repository folder. So before I can do that, I have to change into the, I have to change my directory. It's uh, called CD change directory, and open the the folder where my Git repository um, is located. And now I can execute the Git checkout at training. Okay, and now we see switch to a new branch and we now have a, a second branch uh, where we can uh, commit our new uh, training material to. Um, and now, uh, as we are on the right branch, we can uh, do our changes. So we want to add um, the, the training material and I, have already prepared the changes. Um, so So it's just text we want to include into the readme file. And so I open now the Git repository folder and we are now, open it. Um, with a text editor. And what we want to do is now go on line 15 and just insert um, our uh, training material we have prepared. Um, at this point, I want to say um, Git is uh, not dependent on, on what you're managing in with it. So as long as it is a text-based file, you can uh, track versions. So it doesn't matter if it is software code, if it, it's Python code, if it's R code, or if it is just a simple text file, or even if it is a CSV file. Um, it can manage it and uh, track uh, differences between the versions on a line basis, and that's all fine. So we are saving that now. And now we save and now we need to uh, tell Git uh, the changes made to this file should be also included into the next commit before the changes actually include into the commit. <clears throat> and uh, if you think uh, this is a cumbersome process that you always need to tell Git um, which changes to add when you do a next commit, uh, there is an easy explanation of why it was solved that way. Um, imagine that you work on your next publication, for example, and you have uh, written your publication in LaTeX code and you manage your, uh, or you maintain your LaTeX code in a Git repository. And you had a productive day and made some changes on all chapters. And at the end of the day, you want to commit the introduction because it's ready, but you don't want to include the conclusion because um, it's not ready yet. So you would need a way to tell Git which changes to add to the commit you're doing now and which not to add to the commit. And this is done with uh, the add command. And after executing the add command, um, the specific changes that are defined with the, um, th that are in the folder are saved in a place that is called um, staging area. And um, you can Im imagine it a bit like taking a group photo. So um, you have your local, file system and all the files are the participants and committing 
is taking a snapshot with a camera. And before you're taking the snapshot, you want to arrange the people somehow. And that is that is what the staging area is for. So you can arrange your files for the next commit. And what we are going to do now is execute this command and add it to this staging area. And finally, we can do what we wanted to do. We can commit the changed file by executing the, the commit. In the Git world, we always provide a short message for every commit that describes what we changed in this commit. And in this case, a new training material edit would be a suitable message. And the uh, resulting command looks like this. It's git commit and by typing dash m we can also include a, a, the commit message new training material added so and now we see new training material edit was committed to our repository so and now i will Go because these were now a bunch of um, commands we did. I want to go back to this uh, representation and, and recap what we've done now. So we see what this, uh, the environment looked like after we cloned the repository. And the next thing we did was creating a new branch with the git checkout operation. And as I said before, branches are only um, pointers to a certain commit. And as we want to continue from the main branch, uh, the new branch also points to the, the commit the main branch pointed to. And the next thing we did was doing the changes and creating this new commit by first um, modifying the file, then putting the file into the staging area uh, with the add command, and then committing it to the repository. And after doing that, after adding the file to the staging area and committing the staging area, we have a situation that looks like this. We created a new commit. The main branch still points to the initial commit as before. And our changes are now uh, visible when we check out this add training material branch. Um, yes, until now, all commands only affected our local machines. No data was transferred to GitLab yet. And I mentioned before, we want somehow uh to move this new branch to our gitlab server that this guy reviewing our changes uh is able to um uh, review the branch uh, and to move our new branch to gitlab we need an operation called push and i will show you now what is happening after we execute this operation and it just um, it's actually the opposite direction to what we did when we cloned the repository. When we push, um, Git looks uh, what changed here and um, adds these changes to our GitLab server. Um, <clears throat> and it also allows us to specify one of our local branches. That, so we don't need to push everything. We could also just say, please push this um, new branch to our server. And this is what we are going to do now. And after that, we are done with this um, technical part on, on our local machine. So I will now execute git push. And now I'm typing origin, and this means, um, uh, let me explain it, that in the Git world, um, the, the server, the GitLab server, is always referred to as origin, because um, that's also the source where we got the, the repository from, where we downloaded it from. So in these commands, when there's 
uh, written somewhere origin, it always refers to this remote repository. And we add, uh, specify our branch name at training material. And this command now did exactly what we saw here. It now took this new branch and moved it to our remote repository. And we can verify if it worked now by um, refreshing our page. And um, I showed you before this branch Dropbox. And if we press it now, voila, we see that we have um, two branches now. So we have the main branch and it looked like before, nothing changed. And we have this new at training material branch. And the difference is that we suddenly have this table here. That is what we contributed on our branch. And our final step now is that we want to uh to we want these changes to be merged into the main branch that they are available for everyone and um as i said what we're doing now is creating a merge request the ticket that notifies this reviewer that my changes are done and they are ready to be merged into the main branch but that uh, this guy has to uh review them before he merges them. And <clears throat> this feature can be found right under the issues um, item here. And clicking the blue button allows us to create this new merge request. And, and on this view, we see two boxes. And one says source branch and one says target branch. And this means that GitLab asks us now um, what we want to be merged. Because in large projects, there are a lot of branches maybe, and GitLab doesn't know which one is ours that we want to merge now. So we can specify that now and explicitly tell GitLab hmm. this is taking now some while. Ah, now, uh, now we can explicitly tell GitLab that we want to the add training material branch be merged into the main branch so that all the changes we made here are incorporated in the main history. And now we click compare branches and continue. And this is an interesting aspect now. Um, I will show you because in the merge requests, we can now see all the difference we made. I will show you that in a few seconds. But first, just uh, what we see here is a, a formula where we can provide some additional information about our changes, a title, a description, what we made. And again, we can assign this to a reviewer, for example. And we can edit the changes, so I assign it to me. And then let's create this merge request. And now you have these tabs here under the title of the merge request. And when you click on changes, you now have this uh, nice view that shows you that in the readme file, we have added these green lines. And in case we removed some lines, they are. Um, they have a, a red background. But in this case, we just added some lines. And um, let's assume I'm the reviewer now, and I want to uh, comment on these changes. Then you see this, uh, there is a, a speaking bubble right here. And we can click on it and just comment like a uh, nice idea and add this comment. And whenever a comment is made, the one that uh, contributed um, 
is notified and can react to that. And once um, everyone is fine with the changes, um, we can go back to the overview. And again, we have this one button that is called merge. And after that, uh, the changes are finally incorporated in the main branch. And I also have a diagram for that. So this is how we ended up after pushing our changes to GitLab. And when we merge it, that's how it looks like. So um, the changes from here and the new one are combined and our main branch, oh, I see I made, actually this box should be up here. The main branch is now pointing to this uh, new merged um, commit. Yes, and so the merge is done. And again, to verify if everything worked, I expect now that this training material table should be on my main branch. And as we can see, we are on our main branch. And if I have a look on the readme now, we see the changes we made are finally incorporated and they are not just added by me, but they are also reviewed and someone um, added some comments to it and maybe I improved it a bit. And after this curation process, it was finally merged into the main, uh, main branch. And to conclude this session now, we can go back to the issues tab and go to the board. And as we are done now, we can take this ticket and move it to the closed column. And everyone knows that this task uh, was already finished. Yes, um, I will now um, provide you the link to this repos repository and you can then on your own uh, uh, go through the content here. It provides also, uh, I will go down here, here, the part where I, I did the comments in the command line, you will find a detailed description again. You can read it, what each command does uh, on your own, if it was too fast for you. Um, so I, I provided some documentation here. And so, but that's it from my side. Um, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed my uh, short demo. And I think we can move on to the Q and A session now. Thank you very much, Florian. I think we have all realized that Git is a world on its own. You can also stop recording now. Mm -hmm.